every right in that constitution is not absolute. It is always limited if it's just a favoring of a democratic society. So I think it is just like the open democratic society for a woman to have a termination of pregnancy. So just have to weigh those um, those rights and like what is important what and is it the right to raise or is it the right to have a um, reproductive right for a woman? Some of the nurses really have a huge problem, say they they they're being ostracized by their colleagues. And they're not allowed to go to church anymore because they they, they call them murderers, they, they call their children they, the children are at school are being valid and they, they tell them you know, mother is a killer. I went to my minister, but I didn't tell him that I'm, I'm busy with it, doing the service part. Uh, We're not scared. I just asked him, what does he think about this? Because it's... I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable, and uh, it's against us, uh, our religious. And uh, it, don't, it, would, it would suggest me not to do it. On the other hand, you see, they don't have anyone, everybody's refusing. As I said, the service must go on. There is people that you must help, and that's maybe the reason why I'm doing it. I don't know. I would say maybe I'm confused. have nurses who said that they personally, the reason why they had become involved in, in abortion care is that they personally had, ex either they or a friend or family member had, you know, needed an abortion, they'd been personally involved in some way, or whether it was a patient who had died or a, a daughter or someone who needed an abortion, maybe they themselves had had an abortion. Basically, it started when I was very young, I was still a teenager and um, pregnant, I uh, wasn't ready to be a mom. Um, then unfortunately I tried lots of things. You know, friends would say use this and the other one would say use that. And one would say um, take lots of aspirin, you try that, doesn't help. And uh, you just become hopeless. And uh, one would say there's a nurse that stays in a certain area, go and visit her, and you go there, she's out of town. And uh, you keep trying until you just lose hope. Because you try until, you know, while well, why, why you're still looking for this hope, I mean, for this help, time is actually flying, you know. When I see a teenager who's actually pregnant and is not ready to be a mom, eh, I understand what she's going through. It's against my religion for me as a person to go for an abortion. But it's not for me, uh, um, it's not like um, illegal or against my religion to help somebody. For me it's the same like giving a tablet, like a high blood pressure or any other tablet or any injection to somebody. Mm -hmm. You're helping the person. I'm doing it in my workplace and I'm covered. So I don't feel guilty or anything. There's a huge number of second term um, clients, which for us is worrying because it means that um, they have waited too long. And why is this? If you don't know the actual law, then it's a problem because then they refer somebody here and then they get referred back there and then they get sent there and then they get told to go there and so on and uh, by the time they actually see somebody they're very quite advanced or in the second trimester so that's obviously not optimal. I think for the rural uh, population um, access to facilities where abortions can be done um, is limited um, and that people have to travel far 
um, we get clients from um, the Eastern Cape and so on that uh, would come here specifically and then often they are late, you know, that also move into the second trimester because they couldn't access a facility, you know, in the rural area. I would say in the rural areas they do anything to access the contraceptive. Sometimes they go to clinics. You hear stories like they have to walk about 10 kilometers or even more, you know, to get to a clinic to a point where they can access the contraceptive. You will understand that in those areas, it's, it's either an area that will cover five different villages, has got only one uh, day hospital, and uh, obviously they are overstressed, you know, and some of them don't even know about the fact that they can go there. It was awful for me. I still don't think I've really been able to deal with the intense anger and sadness that I have felt that, you know, it's it's mixed up with feelings of working still in, in a hospital that was segregated, where black women had poor, poor services in comparison to white women. And I only saw black women really coming in for these um, for, for illegal abortions. These women were generally would come in after a weekend and they would have fever, they would be very, very ill, they would have a very um, hard abdomen because there was an infection. They would need to go to the theatre and be put on anti antibiotics. Some of them needed to have a hysterectomy. And nobody ever taught me as a nurse what actually was happening then. They were seen as dirty and um, they were seen as naughty. I think, given the context in South Africa, um, it was really important to have black women speaking out about um, the injustices of not being having access to abortion. Because, as a white woman and as a wealthy woman, one had recourse even under apartheid. You know, the previous act. You know, one could say one suicidal and go to a psychiatrist and then get a, a termination. But what needed to be emphasized was it was black women that were suffering and black women that were obtaining illegal abortions that were poor for their health and um, dying and the medical research council research indicated that there were 425 women estimated to die every year from backstreet abortions I stopped getting my period and then but I didn't even notice honestly I didn't even notice that 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 you know my period is going and all the symptoms of pregnancy I didn't even notice it and then I just saw my stomach started getting hard and, but that didn't I didn't even notice that my stomach just looked a bit big one and looked and I looked and I was like oh my god something is not right here I told my cousin, he told my grandmother, he told my grandmother, he told my grandmother, he told my grandfather. They shot me up the house. <laughs> 